Houston, 4 Sierra Hotel, wind 1503, runway 19, are clear for takeoff. Hello and welcome to FS Mania and the second installment of our business jet series. Although this is the second video of the series, it is our first video of the new year 2015. So I'd like to take this opportunity to say Happy New Year and also to say thank you to everyone for contributing to FS Mania with your comments, your feedback, and most of all, your encouragement. I appreciate the suggestions you make and I will do my level best to incorporate constructive suggestions into new videos. With that said, today we're flying Flight One's model of the Cessna Citation Mustang, which is an entry-level, very light business class jet built by the Cessna Aircraft Company at their Independence, Kansas production facility. Our flight today will be from beautiful Jackson Hole Airport, located in western Wyoming, USA, on a northerly route over to the Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport, located in southwest Montana, sometimes referred to as Big Sky Country. 460 Kilo, turn left Alpha 1, taxi to the ramp via Alpha. Let's take a quick look at our route on an IFR in route chart. You can see we have planned for a south departure out of Jackson Hole. We're pretty much flying around our elbow to get to our thumb. Here's our destination up here to the north. So why would we have to go so far out of our way? Why not just go direct to Bozeman? This is something like 270 nautical miles and it's 130 miles to Bozeman. Well there's several good reasons for that. On a south departure we need to gain some altitude before we make any turns for terrain clearance and to that end we are flying the Alpine 1 SID out of Jackson Hole and this is the first waypoint of the SID here which is Kickney intersection and so that's one reason. Another reason is because to the north let's switch over to the VFR ch chart to the north is the Grand Teton National Park and also the Yellowstone National Park and so there aren't really uh, any great airways that go through there. There aren't any airways that go through those areas, especially uh, the lower altitudes. There is, um, I will admit, there is a airway going back to the IFR chart. There is an airway right here that goes from Du Bois direct into Bozeman, but I chose not to use that one uh, for well, mainly because we're going to be flying up at flight level 240, and this is a low altitude in route chart, which is good up to flight level 180. So if we switch over and look at the world high chart, you can see no jet routes from our SID departure point. So we're picking up a jet route here, J9, over to Dillon, and we'll be at flight level 240 for 70 miles. So anyway, that's why I chose that route. And it also puts us up in a good position to fly an ILS approach into Bozeman, which we can, if we switch back to the world low chart, we can see there we'll be flying into the ILS 1-2 approach into Bozeman. So that's why I did that. And hopefully what we can do is climb fast enough and we should be able to, and the Cessna Mustang will climb fast enough to be able to maybe take a shortcut, cut out some of this, and maybe fly direct to Du Bois. Du Bois. So that's the plan, and let's go fly. In our last video, we flew to the Jackson Hole, Wyoming airport from Denver, Colorado in the Embraer Phenom 100. Today, our destination is Bozeman Yellowstone International Airport, identifier Kilo Bravo Zulu November, located eight miles north of Bozeman in Gallatin County, Montana. The airport has recently become the busiest airport in Montana for passenger service. The airport is 4,473 feet above sea level, has three runways. The longest runway, 1230, is 8,994 feet long. The airport terminal was expanded in 2011, adding three additional gates. A U.S. Customs and Border Patrol facility was added in 2013, opening the door for international flights and thereby allowing Bozeman's Yellowstone to surpass Billings as the busiest airport in Montana, having close to a million passengers and something like 80,000 aircraft operations annually. 
General aviation accounts for 76% of the operations, scheduled airlines for 17%, and corporate jets for 7%. Although today we will be flying Flight 1 Cessna Mustang, I will give you a sneak peek at a couple of new planes in our hangar that will be featured very soon in upcoming FS Mania videos. Here is the newly released Real Air Beechcraft Turbine Duke version 2 which includes major updates including high definition 2048 pixel textures, more character and ambiance in the cockpit textures, custom sounds on all cockpit switches, extensive flight model improvements, improved gauge lighting, and much, much more. I've heard a lot of very good reviews on this airplane and I can't wait to take her up and stretch her legs. Also, Coronado recently released its version of the S550 Citation II. And while I'm delighted that we're getting a new business class jet, I know it will look fantastic. I'm somewhat cautiously optimistic that Coronado will go the extra mile to provide a realistic representation of the S550. I have heard that the original released version contained numerous bugs and issues. There was a lot of moaning and groaning in various online forums prompting Coronado to rapidly release Service Pack 1 which presumably addresses the majority of early complaints. This is the Surface Pack 1 version. I haven't had a chance to fly it as of yet, but I do plan to feature it as the next aircraft in this business class jet series. So stay tuned to see at least some fantastic eye candy and hopefully a well-modeled addition to the business class jet offerings. And now for the Mustang. This is the Model 510 Cessna Citation Mustang Considered to be an entry-level, very light business class jet, built in the U.S. by Cessna in Independence, Kansas. The Mustang, in its standard configuration, has four passenger seats in the aft cabin, a toilet, and seating for two in the cockpit. Like most other light jets, the Mustang is approved for single pilot operation and is approved for flight into known icing conditions. The Mustang, which has been in production since 2006, is a low-wing cantilever monoplane with a swept wing, T-tail, and tricycle retractable landing gear. One main door is located in the forward left section of the aircraft with an additional emergency exit on the center right section of the fuselage. Power is provided by two Pratt & Whitney PW615F turbofan engines mounted in pods on the aft fuselage. Each engine weighs only 300 pounds and yet produces 1,460 pounds of thrust which will take the Mustang all the way up to 41,000 feet if you so desire. Approximate fuel consumption is 72 gallons per hour or 482 pounds per hour. With a usable fuel capacity of 386 gallons, she will cruise at 340 knots with a range of 1167 nautical miles. The Mustang is 40 feet 7 inches long, has a wingspan of 43 feet 2 inches and a tail height of 13 feet 5 inches with an empty weight of 5,560 pounds and a useful load of 3,170 pounds, maximum takeoff weight is 8,645 pounds. Avionics include a Mustang-specific Garmin G1000 featuring Traffic. two primary flight displays or PFDs and a large center multifunction display or MFD. Although Flight 1 did not model the safe flight plan feature of the G1000, the MFD utilizes a GCU-475 MFD controller, which helps speed up the process of entering waypoints. Another unmodeled G1000 feature is the VNAV, or vertical navigation. However, with the companion GFC-710 AFCS, or automatic flight control system, you do have a wide range of automatic flight control modes to help manage this high-performance, complex airplane. In a word, I would describe this airplane as small. However, I would also say what she lacks in size, she makes up in heart. Fun and easy to fly, relatively affordable, and you can have your own for a mere 3.28 million US dollars. So, climb aboard, buckle up, and let's go fly. Hello and welcome aboard FS Mania's flight from Jackson Hole, Wyoming to Bozeman, Montana in the Cessna Citation Mustang by Flight One. I will say from the outset 
that I don't think I'm a fan of this model from Flight One. It is buggy. I have started to record this flight I think three or four different times and have had to um, restart because of bugs so we'll see if we can get through it and uh, just to give you an overview of the cockpit here you can see we have the circuit breakers left and right that we can check to make sure they are all in we have the Garmin G1000 with two PFDs and primary flight display and one large MFD central and a MFD controller down here where we can key in and we don't have to use the knobs we can key in our waypoints uh, there's some standby instrumentation of course our auto flight uh, autopilot up here on the glare shield and most of our switches anti-icing and electrical system and fuel right here in front of the pilot and our lighting here is centrally located environmental uh, controls over here to the right and our throttle quadrant right there overhead the only thing we have are a couple of map lights and some dome light a dome light so uh, fairly organized well laid out uh, there's a um, systems check we'll go through here in a minute I'm gonna hide our yoke so that I can uh, get in up close and personal they're so large uh, you cannot easily see these switches um, unless you uh, hide the yoke so just to get us on down here where we can see and read um, more easily okay so you can see one of the first things we want to do is a, a battery test for the standby avionics we should see a green light there we do then we'll come up into the standby and we should see an amber light and our um, instruments are energized and they go through a little self check and then they glow steady green all that looks good we have our avionics power is off left and right generators these are in the on position uh, there's off so there's on and we want to check the um, emergency bus battery position traffic and that's our emergency bus. We've got energized avionics, so we'll bring it up into the battery position and cut on our avionics power right here. Ignitions are in the normal position, left and right. Fuel boost, normal position. Fuel transfer is off. And our mic switch is on headset. FADEC is centered. And all of our ice protection is off. Gear lever is down three greens park and brake set any skid let's go on let's come on with our passenger safety our seat belt warning sign let's see if we get that on and our beacon is on let's go ahead and cancel out uh get back here where I'm, let's see cancel that and go back down And let's continue on across. Our panel lights are off. Our cockpit cockpit displays are full bright. And air conditions off. Our fans, cabin and cockpit fans off. Pressurization controls in the normal position. Cabin dump is normal indicating. And the co-pilot mic switches headset. ELT is armed. And the oxygen is pushed in to restore. And uh, let's come down here and do, um, let's, let's go ahead and get our ATIS tuned in. So what I'll do is switch pages to the airport page. And let's get a cursor. That's not what I wanted. There's our airport page. Push the cursor. There we go. And uh, let's type in KJAC. I'm going to try the auto-tune feature. This is one thing I got tripped up on with a bug earlier and so hopefully this will I'm going to do this first this time. So we have KJAC in there flashing cursor. We want to move the cursor down. We want to highlight the ATIS frequency and I want to put it up here in COM1 and by entering that right now it's reading 129 uh, 25 and the frequency is 120625 so let's put that in. It did go in and let's see if we can swap it. Yes, thankfully. Uh, it wouldn't swap earlier. 
We'll go ahead and put the ground in, the other frequency, and let's flop down here and put in the tower. Tower's plugged in, and departure frequency is Salt Lake Center 133.25, so we'll put that in here. I want this, let's go the short way. There's our departure control. Salt Lake Center. And 2982 on the altimeter. One bug that I have found golf is the information, is I cannot change the altimeter setting on the standby altimeter. It just changes this one. I'll show you. See, it's changing this one down here, but not that one. So I use the B key on the keyboard, and that changes it. Everything's set. We're using ILS-19, departing runway 19, and information golf. And I am going to switch this frequency ever so slightly so we don't listen to traffic. There we go. We'll call that ground. So we don't listen to the chatter on the ground frequency. And now let's, um, before we get our clearance, let's go ahead and put in as much of our flight plan as we can. So I want to use our flight plan key. And the trick here is to get the cursor flashing. And then we're going to use the little knob to bring up the waypoint information box. And then the little knob again. And then we'll just type in our departure airport is Kilo Juliet Alpha Charlie K Jack. And we'll enter that. And then we'll use that little knob again and little knob again. And we bring up our first waypoint, which is Idaho Falls Vortac. So that identifier is India Delta Alpha. And we enter that. And we just keep doing that little knob, little knob. And our next waypoint is an intersection called Rigby. And that is Romeo, Romeo, Romeo. Where art thou? Here we are. Romeo, India, Golf, Bravo, Yankee, Rigby. We enter that one. And I don't know what I did. Let's try it again. They didn't like something. I must have misspelled it. I bet you I did. Or, Traffic. Uh, uh, G. B. Uh, I think I put in a V. There we go. Rig B. There we are. It likes Rig B. And little knob, little knob. And we want the boys, which is Delta, Delta, Bravo, Sierra. The boys, and then from there we're going to Dylan Vortac, which is let's get the little knob, little knob, Delta Lima November, and we'll enter that, and then Whitehall, little knob, little knob, and that is Hotel India Alpha. And there is more than one Whitehall. We want the one in the U.S., so we just enter again. And then finally, our destination is Kilo, Bravo, Zulu, November, Bozeman. There we go. So we have an active flight plan. Now, I want to bring that cursor back up. We already have the, the active leg. But if we didn't, I'll show you, you just press the menu key. We've highlighted the waypoint that we want to fly to. We activate the leg, we enter, and it tells us right up here on our PFD that we are flying from KJAC to Idaho Falls. And the, now the other thing we need to do is to go ahead and put in our SID. I want to do that, and then we'll call and get our clearance. So we know we're going to use a SID departing from runway 19, so we just 
come in and hit the procedure key. We can actually use this one up here, maybe be a little easier. Um, in fact, why don't I go ahead and just close this back out. Get down here where I can see it. Flight plan, there we go. We're gonna use this one. So basically, it's easier. See, we don't, you know, the problem with the controller is you gotta get way down here and look and read what you're punching in up there and you know the graphics aren't all that so we can just do it right here procedure now we can select departure we use the big knob and enter and alpine one is the departure that we want so we enter that any runway all runways and the kick knee transition so that's what we want and I want to load it so we're loaded and now we're our active leg is KJAC to uh, 6,060 feet elevation that will make a turn on course. And if we want to, let's just, why don't we bring it up and look at it. We can see we're going to Kickney and then en route to Idaho Falls and so on. So everything is as it should be there. And I'm just going to refer to the checklist and let's call clearance. Let's see. We've got our flight plan in. Oh, before we do, uh, yes, let's call clearance. So we have them tuned in. Right now our active is COM1. Uh, that is where I said ground is. So COM1 is there. So we're ready to go. Let's just key the mic. Jackson Ground, Mustang 510 Foxtrot 1 at Jackson Hole Aviation. We'd like to pick up our IFR clearance to Bozeman. Mustang 510 Foxtrot 1, Jackson Ground. You are cleared to the Kilo Bravo Zulu November Airport via the Alpine 1 departure, then is filed. Climb and maintain 15000. Expect flight level 240, 10 minutes after departure. Contact Salt Lake Center, 133.25, squawk 0316. 510 Foxtrot 1 is cleared to the Bozeman Airport via the Alpine 1 Departure, then is filed. Climb and maintain 15,000. Expect flight level 240. 10 minutes after departure, contact Salt Lake Center on 3325 and squawk is 0316. Mustang 0 Foxtrot 1, readback's correct. Call me this frequency, when ready to taxi. 0 Foxtrot 1, copy. All right, so let's put in our transponder. We press code and 0316. It's our squawk code. Notice that it puts it in there and it is squawking ground automatically. So it will automatically uh, go to altitude mode when we take off. So we don't have to fiddle it. We just need to verify that it does. And if we want to ident, there's an ident feature right there. Our CDI is set up for the GPS. Um, let's set our heading to initial uh, runway heading, which is 187. So there is 187 there, and altitude, let's set up, um, we're at 1500 setting the window, let's put it up to 2000 and then we'll use the upper part to raise it up to 15000, and that sets up our autopilot. We're just moving right along here, and one other thing while we're in here, in fact, I want to move in a little bit closer. Get down here where we can see. There is a, a reference feature here where our V-speeds are already calculated. So what we want to do is come down and we can put these, display them. And I think we're going to display our rotation speed, which is the same as V1, VR and V1 are the same in this airplane, and that is 91 knots, so I've cut that to ohm, and our V2, which is our safe takeoff speed, is 97 knots. We'll go ahead and plug that in for reference, and little quick spots are hard to find sometimes on this, and our VNR is uh, our engine out speed, climb speed, so we'll plug that in and put that on. See the click spot, where are you? And sometimes it's just a matter of repositioning my, my view. 
There it is on. And then we got to get down here. We don't need V ref or V approach yet, but minimums, yes, we want to cut those on. Um, I've not actually had any call outs. There we go, barometric and ILS is 200 feet, so we'll put that in. And then we need to also put in our destination field elevation. So basically, we got to do a lot of scrolling here because a Bozeman is 4,470 feet. And the mouse and the scroll wheel, uh, pretty much, you know, the real deal, I'm sure, probably doesn't take this long. I'm glad we're not flying into Lukla, which is over 9,000 feet. But we'll get there. So coming up on 2,600. Yeah, I think the airplane will climb this fast. And we're getting about to 4,000. So Bozeman is 4,470. There's 30, 70. There it is. So we have all that in there plugged in. And you can see it over here under cabin pressure. We'll talk about that. Let's close this box. So right now we're reading 6450, which is pretty close to the field elevation. We have 4470. Our climb rate is zero, and our delta P is zero. And all this is automated. I have noticed that when taking off that this begins to descend, and the uh, cabin altitude goes down to a very comfortable 1,000 feet when we're flying up at um, you know 24,000 feet. So that's pretty incredible. And I'll just, we'll, I'll, we'll see what happens with that. Maybe it won't this time, but um, we have that set. Now let's just do a, a check now. Let's say, let's get over here. And we're gonna just do a, a check of our warning system. So there's our fire warning. And we have our lights lit up. There's no audible warning. And there is with the gear. And that one, uh, let me get where I can see it, uh, our pressurization, and you can see we have, a, a course, of caution lights and also a cast message that's in red. And the stall warning. And you can see that it's also displayed there. And flap warning. Hey, this time it did work. Just for a few seconds, I saw the X there. That's good and on the flap indicator and flaps fail and a caution light so that's good and over speed and anti-skid and we got a warning that time i have had that not to work so everything seems to be working and the enunciator which are all these lights and uh, i believe this is lit I was thinking there was should be a red unlock one there lit, but I don't see it. That one I believe is supposed to be lit when that's tested, so it does not appear to be working. Okay, can't have everything. So we've gone, gone through those tests, and now let me just reset and look at my checklist and see what I have missed. Fuel quantity, have we looked at that? So we're pretty much full fuel. We have uh, 25, almost 2,600 pounds of fuel. We've got more than enough to get there. And just running through, landing gears down. Yes, anti-skid switch is on. That is on. And passenger safety exterior lights. We have the beacon on, cockpit lighting as required. Air condition is off. We've checked all that. Cabin fans off, air source both, pressurization's norm, cabin dump norm, ELT is armed, and our flaps are in the up position, and trims here is set for takeoff, and throttles, let's see, let's come down here, they are in the cutoff, and look under here, you can see there's a uh, throttle sync knob, we can cut that into the on position. And while we're down here, you can see there's some more trim switches for the uh, yaw and the ailerons. And um, so far, I've not had a need for those. Let's unhide these now for the heck of it. And 
We have completed our pre-flight. Wheel chalks are moved. Cabin door is closed. Beacon light switch is on. This is before takeoff. Air condition switch off. ECUS check. And everything's there that should be. Battery voltage. Take a look at that. 24 volts. It's good. So we should see the stall warning heater. It's not on. And uh, low oil pressure, of course. No engines running. So we're going to start our right engine first with any luck. And um, so what we want to do is we've got our start over here. It's pretty much automated. We just need to um, monitor the N1 when it goes to 9%. We will add fuel. Uh, we'll bring this out and cut off. And there's a click spot here. Most of the time it works. So here's the N1 coming up. And there's 9%. So I brought it up out of the cutoff. And then we just need to keep an eye on the oil pressure coming up. The ITT temperature doesn't spike over 800. And we have fuel flow. And we've got a generator charging. And N1 stable. And I'd say we have a successful light. And let's just repeat the process for number one. Monitor in N1. I like the rumble of that engine. There's 9%. And oil pressure's up. N1's rising. Waiting on a light. There it is. ITT stays below 800. And one stabilizing, two good lights. Starter sequence complete. Environmental controls will set those. And I cut on the cabin fan. This one's a little too noisy for me. Honestly, I think we'll just leave it off. Uh, I don't want you to strain to hear me. And we can't go ahead and cut the temperature up. Not that we'll know the difference, but you know, it's cold outside, so. And let's go ahead then and set our flaps for, this is before taxi. And so flaps for takeoff. Elevator trim is set for takeoff. Passenger safety switch is on. Flight controls, we want to check those, make sure we got full range of movement. Elevator, ailerons, and rudders. Check, check, check. Speed brakes right here. And you can see an annunciator. Yeah, you actually look out the window and see them. Um, if we just sort of get over here and put our head right up against the glass, there they are. And you can see they are definitely up. Not much of a speed brake, but I guess every little bit helps when you're trying to get stopped. So we want to retract those, make sure the light goes out. Flaps are indicating takeoff, and let's call ground and get our clearance. We are on the right frequency, yes. Ground Mustang 510 Foxtrot 1 ready to taxi with hotel. We are at Jackson Hole Aviation. I believe that was actually golf. Mustang 10. 510 Foxtrot 1 Jackson Ground Runway 19 Taxi via Alpha via Alpha 40 Foxtrot 1 Okay, brakes off and let's get this light on And we are ready to go 